Dustin Jerison was found brutally murdered in a seemingly safe camping area along Moose Creek near Big Sky, Montana, leaving his family and the community devastated. His camping buddy would arrive a day later than Dustin had set camp for, discovering his bloody body, assuming that a bear had attacked him inside of the tent where he was discovered. Well, the evidence didn't support that, and police are now saying it's murder, and they have a suspect in custody. They're looking for a large axe that might have been the weapon used. Hey everybody, thanks for joining Profiling Evil on this exploration into the mysterious murder of Dustin Jerson. Please hit that like and subscribe button and share Profiling Evil with your friends and your contacts. And please consider giving us a thumbs up. It really does help. Now despite initial investigations, Dustin's case remained unsolved for three weeks. In fact, in reality, it's still unsolved with few leads and many unanswered questions, especially many unanswered questions publicly. This video is going to delve into the mysterious circumstances surrounding his death. And while we wait for law enforcement to re reveal more about this suspect that they're looking at, examine ways in which each of us can reduce our own risk of being victimized in a similar situation. And please, keep in mind that I'm not being judgmental about Dustin's decision to camp alone. I'm merely using the circumstances to teach about risk reduction. And I also want to take a moment and thank Profiling Evil channel member Joanna, who lives nearby this murder scene and reached out to me, asking me to shed a little bit of additional light on the case. So thanks, Joanna. Now, Dustin Jersom's sister described him as not only her brother, but a son, an uncle, and a best friend to many, many people. Reportedly, he was a really conscientious guy who let his family know that he was going camping for the weekend. In fact, it sounds like he did that often. Now, Dustin also reportedly had a fun side to him. He was described as a person who really liked skateboarding, snowboarding. He was, according to them, goofy and kind. Dustin was a contractor in the area and well-known. He probably framed many of the houses, installed concrete, and even did skilled finish work, according to the reports that I've read. Above all, he was a loving, helpful, and adorning father. In a press conference conducted by the Gallatin County Sheriff, Dan Springer, we learned that Dustin's death was reported on October 12th when his friend called 911 reporting that he'd found his buddy two and a half miles up Moose Creek. This, this is just north of Big Sky, Montana. Dustin was inside of his wall tent, which is described as a type of tent with four vertical walls. They're usually made of canvas and placed on a frame. I haven't seen the actual tent. But the photograph of Dustin's truck suggests that the tent could have even been in the bed of his truck, although I don't think so. This guy uh, probably used his truck more for construction kind of items, and the tent was off to the side. But he had in his possession a shotgun, a pistol, and a large axe. So with that shotgun and pistol, I don't think he was out hunting big game with a, that we would see a long rifle on. But we might learn more as information comes out on this case. Now, Dustin reportedly told his family that he was headed to the hills to camp, and he did so on Thursday, October 10th. So this was two days before he was discovered uh, deceased. He was well prepared for the weekend of camping, and he planned on meeting a friend on Friday afternoon. But he never made that meeting. Now, according to media reports, Dustin would often go camping uh, with friends, and he would usually go a little bit ahead of them, even days ahead of them, to kind of set things up so that it was nice when his buddies arrived. Well, two days after he left home, Dustin's friend located his vehicle 
and his body inside of that tent. He called he called 911 about 10 o'clock in the morning. And in that initial report, the friend suggested that Dustin might have been killed by a bear attack. And I assume this was kind of a quick response because the scene was so incredibly bloody. The actual day and time of his death have not been determined yet, although I'm sure that the medical examiner has come up with a theory on when that death actually occurred. So when sheriff's investigators, backed up by wildlife resource officers, responded to the scene, the wildlife resource guys quickly determined there was no evidence to suggest that this was a bear attack. And the investigation changed from a death investigation into a homicide investigation. The sheriff's office almost immediately started asking for any information from people who were in the area and still are asking for that information. So if you were in the area out uh, driving around or anything else, reach out to the sheriff's office if you saw anything or if you've got anything on camera. Now they're also asking for homeowners and property owners to check their game cameras, surveillance cameras, anything that might be useful in this investigation. The sheriff's office then announced that they were looking for pieces of Dustin's property that appeared to be missing from the campsite and they believed were associated with the murders. They, they said they were looking for a 26 inch, so that's a two foot long camp axe with the brand of Estwing. They were looking for a Remington 12 gauge shotgun and a 44 Magnum revolver, a pistol. And then they also said that an orange Yeti cooler was missing from his uh, property. So if you know anything about these, reach out to law enforcement. And, and again, think about this. Those weapons would have afforded your some a really high level of protection if he sensed a threat. So that makes me continue to wonder if he was asleep or unconscious at the time of the attack. And if he knew who attacked him. Because somehow they were intimately close to where they could get to him without him thinking there's a threat coming. Now an autopsy was performed that, that determined that Yersum died from multiple chop wounds, classifying his death as a homicide. His sister shared these emotional comments on Fox News. That there's somebody out there in our community that is capable and, you know, for me, I mean, my heart is like, everybody stop and look and help find who did this, you know? Um, it's scary. I, uh, yeah, I just, and it's amazing how many people don't know what even happened in our own community. You know, I have, Dustin has amazing friends and they've been passing out flyers and it's quite shocking. This isn't a big valley. I mean, it's gotten bigger and there's a lot more people. It's grown. But uh, there's so many people who don't know that this happened. And I guess I want them to know. I want them to keep talking about it in hopes that we, that somebody hears it, that it clicks to somebody and they call and just give the detectives just a little bit of what they need to find who did this, to put this together. As far as the investigation, I'm not really gonna speak about that because I don't would never wanna do anything to jeopardize what they're doing because I know that there is a team of people out there that are working so hard. I mean, they are pushing, they are determined to find who did this. Um, and so I'm on their behalf, even I am asking anybody for help. Anybody. He wasn't, I mean, he, he was born in Montana, raised in Montana. All of us, uh, we love the outdoors more than anything. That's one of the reasons we stay here. He was such an outdoorsman, you know, uh, his life, fishing, snowboarding, camping. He was well prepared. He knew what he was doing. He's been out there by himself. I mean, so many times. So many times. Yeah, this is, he loved it. Probably don't go alone. I would say be vigilant. Um, keep, just keep looking. Keep your, I mean, I'm sorry, but look over your shoulder. 
I mean, I can't imagine going camping right now. And that was one of my favorite things ever. It's so hard, I guess. When, you know, you have to think about his life in this, you know, really quick way. And what sticks out to you, you know. Um, we had a, a not great childhood. And I took custody of him when he was a teenager. And I just keep, I mean, it was such a blessing. It was hard, but he was so helpful and he was so sweet. Um, I was a young mother. And so, I mean, he helped me so much. He was the best uncle. I mean, as a 17 year old boy, he would sit with my daughter and have tea parties with her, you know, for hours. And he's just so patient and giving of his time to anybody, you know, that mattered to him. He was a great, great kid. And then you got to see that happen with when he had a daughter. I mean, just the patience, the love that he had for kids and his family. He, um, he has a biological daughter, Adeline, and a stepson, Zeb. It's, I mean, unimaginable, right? You have to wake up every day and keep it keeps running through your head. And you try to make sense of it. And there's there's just no way. There's no way to. I mean, he was so kind, you know, and the type of kid that would help anybody. We just can't imagine who would want to hurt him in that way. I guess I wish they could have heard his laugh, but I just hope they know just how caring he was um, to anybody who would take the time to spend with him. I just, I keep hearing, you know, all these people calling me and telling me that they also loved him like a little brother. He was just, he was like a little brother to everybody. He, the way his willingness to listen and learn. How do I, I, I feel ruined right now. I feel wrecked. My, my world is just, I don't know. It's scary, I guess. It took a lot away whoever did this. I mean, I don't want to have to live in fear. I don't want my daughter to have to live in fear. I don't want anybody to. And yeah, I want to go outside. I, I, I hope to go camping one day, but. Well, Yersom's death highlights the risk associated with camping in isolated locations, especially alone. And I'll tell you what, I'm in a part of the country where we go out and do that from time to time. I did it by myself last week. For, for outdoor enthusiasts who want to reduce their risk while still enjoying the solitude of camping, I thought we'd talk about a couple of key safety measures that you could implement, in my opinion. Number one is to communicate your plans. And, and let me start by saying that Dustin did do this according to all reports. But if you're going out in the woods, inform your friends or your family of your itinerary, especially if you're going to be traveling alone. Share detailed information about where you plan to go, how long you plan to be there, and, and uh, some kind of a plan of if you don't call or show up, what they need to do. This can all aid in a quicker response if you don't check in as planned. Make sure you're choosing safe campsites. Now in this case, Dustin apparently camped in an area that wasn't designated for camping, but according to reports, is often used by people in the area as a campsite. By selecting a known campground, you can decrease the risk of something happening. So if you're going to go to an area where there's limited or no cell phone coverage, think this through and think about the decision you're making. In, on this map, I'm showing how far away these cell towers were. And this map showing the 10 closest cell towers within 100 miles shows you how difficult it is to get a cell signal. You might consider things like Starlink, a satellite phone, 
or at least make sure you know how to use things like Apple 911 global positioning coverage uh, for help if you need it. Number three, bring self-defense tools. Now, Dustin clearly had weapons. So his murder appears to have been in the night. Perhaps he was sleeping or unconscious at the time that this occurred. But setting aside the probability that his death was caused by a another human being, consider the environment and take along things that might help you be a little safer. In that part of the woods, something like bear spray, which works effectively not only on bear, wildlife, but also on uh, potential human threats. You know, maybe it's something as simple as having a whistle or remembering to press the remote control on your car and hitting that panic button so the horn and the lights are flashing and sounding. Anything that might cause attention or draw attention to the scene. Now, in Dustin's case, it's going to be interesting to see if any DNA is collected from cups, utensils, beer cans, whatever. And I'm hoping that the medical examiner will release information regarding whether this kid had drugs or alcohol in his system. Anything that might have reduced his ability to recognize a growing threat or fight off an attacker. And again, makes me wonder, was he asleep or unconscious when this happened? Number four, stay aware of your surroundings. In wilderness settings, be vigilant about unusual sounds, disturbances, or signs that other people are near your campsite. This can alert you to potential threats early on, especially when camping alone. In this particular case, it appears that Dustin wasn't expecting anyone until Friday the 11th. The time of death is going to be crucial in directing this case and identifying what additional evidence might be important and how to evaluate what evidence comes forward. Think about the things. While the cellular data might be less reliable in the area, there might be data off of vehicles collected that can be analyzed as suspects emerge in this case. The vehicle data would become available through satellites in a process called trilateration. It uses the positioning, positioning of three or more satellites from the Global Navigation Satellite System. And its distance from, uh, from those satellites determines latitude, longitude, and elevation, and time. So it's really important that they look at things like that. Number five, pack an emergency kit. Now, Dustin was well prepared for the weekend adventure he was planning, but this is a perfect time to mention that any camping kit should include things like first aid kits, fire starting tools, emergency blankets, a fully charged portable charger or a solar charger, something that you could use in case of an emergency. Just think about what you might need and prepare for that. Number six, confidence in your ability to protect yourself. And this is a tough one. If you're going to be out there alone, you should possess some kind of basic self-defense skill. Might be physical or it might be emotional and planning. Hopefully you'll have the common sense to know when a situation's worsening. That way you can get out of there before things get too bad. I think of an experience that my wife and I had while camping when we were newlyweds. <clears throat> we found a really nice place to camp. We set up camp, and a few hours after we were there, a group of men showed up in the area, built a fire, and started partying. Well, as they became a little more uh, rambunctious, it made us nervous enough that we packed up our things and we left the area. It was a great lesson that we learned that night and something that we should all consider when we're involved in these kinds of experiences of going out into unfamiliar places. You know, camping alone offers a unique connection to nature, but take precautionary measures such as communicating your plans, staying aware, and preparing an emergency resource or plan of what you would do if things fell apart. The tragic case of Dustin Yearson serves as a sobering reminder of the importance of safety in remote areas and how strategies can help us stay safer while respecting the beauty and solitude of the outdoors. 
And as I said at the beginning, it appears that law enforcement has focused in on a suspect in Dustin Yearson's murder. This, this suspect is apparently cooperating with sheriff's investigators. On October 31st, Gallatin Sheriff's Office announced that after a three-week search, they have a suspect in custody on, the, on unrelated charges, no less. That means they haven't charged him with the murder yet. Now, they haven't released the name of the suspect, but I believe that that's going to leak out pretty darn quickly. The sheriff's office believes the suspect acted alone in this murder and promises further details, stating the charges are coming. But I want to take you back to the press conference with the sheriff's office as they lay out the case in the early stages. And then, like you, I'll continue to watch for anything that unfolds in this case. Hello, thank you all for attending. My name is Dan Springer. I am the Gallatin County Sheriff. On October 12th, the Sheriff's Office received a report of a male found deceased in his wall tent approximately two and a half miles up Moose Creek. The male has been identified as 35-year-old Dustin Gersom of the Belgrade, Belgrade Bozeman area. This is a homicide and we are working all hours of the day and night to find his killer. Jillian described Dustin as a caring, hardworking, and loving brother. He was brutally killed at his campsite, and we need your help. Um, we put together several facts uh, for you to hopefully help the community narrow down exactly what we're looking for, as well as um, jostle any memories out there of anyone that may be up there and encourage people to come forward with information. Dustin was last seen in the afternoon hours of Thursday, October 10, 2024. He was leaving to go camping up Moose Creek in his black 2013 Ford F-250 with a black topper and an aluminum silver ladder rack. He was well prepared for a weekend of camping and had plans to meet with a friend on Friday afternoon, but he never made that meeting. He was located deceased in his tent shortly after 10 o'clock in the morning on Saturday morning. Autopsy has shown that he sustained multiple chop wounds, quote, which led to his death. We're following up on leads, but we have no arrest at this time. We're asking the community members to help us in this way. What we need from you is anyone who is present in the area between the evening hours of Thursday, October 10, and the early morning hours of Saturday, October 12, to reach out to us. That's up Moose Creek. Anyone with trail or game cameras in the Moose Creek area, please reach forward, even if the footage seems irrelevant. Anyone with in-car cameras traveling in the Moose Creek area during this time frame, please reach out to us. Anyone who saw the victim's truck, as a picture will be provided both on our Facebook site as well as I believe it's been provided to media. Um, anyone that's seen that truck during the time frame mentioned, um, please come forward to us. And anyone who saw something out of place, out of the ordinary, in the areas surrounding Moose Creek, think of the whole canyon, if you saw something weird in the canyon area or in town with his truck, please reach out to us. That time frame again is between the evening hours of Thursday, October 10, and early morning hours of Saturday, October 12. We want you to better understand who, Des who Dustin was. And so to do that, Jillian Price, his sister, would like to say a few things. This weekend, we lost our brother, our son, our uncle, our best friends, and our dad in the most unimaginable way. Dustin was a great kid. He was born here in Bozeman, and he worked all over the valley. He could have framed your house. He could have poured your foundation. He could have installed your countertops. He was a hardworking, skilled tradesman. He was a loving, helpful, and adorning father who in no way deserved this. I ask our community to please help us find out who did this. There is someone in our valley that is capable, capable of truly heinous things. Please, if you are in Moose Creek at any time from Thursday to Saturday, please call and talk, even if you think you didn't see anything. 
The tragic murder of Dustin Yearson in Montana is a stark reminder of the unpredictable and sometimes dangerous world that we all live in. Examining circumstances of his case give us an opportunity to reflect on how we might reduce our own risk of falling victim to similar kinds of crimes. It's important to be clear that this discussion is not about blaming Dustin Yearson or implying that Dustin did anything wrong. He was an innocent man who was out enjoying a weekend. He was unjustly taken, and nothing can change that sad truth. By studying cases like Dustin's, we can try to understand the patterns and behaviors that might reduce our own risk vulnerabilities. This is, this is about taking a heartbreaking loss and using it as a way to empower our future decisions, how, how we can make more informed decisions and be aware of the risks that might go otherwise unnoticed. So learning from a tragedy like this is a way to honor Dustin's legacy, helping us build a safer community by being more aware and more proactive. I'd like to know your thoughts on this one, folks, and I hope that you'll put them down below. I also hope that you'll spend some time reading other people's comments and weigh in on those. But remember to be constructive and kind in what you write. Hey, look for Profiling Evil on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter. And if you like audio podcasts, make sure you're checking out Profiling Evil audio podcasts on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget about the Profiling Evil website where you can sign up for the BOLO. That's our digital newsletter. It stands for Be On The Lookout. And the only way you're going to get it is if you've signed up. So go to ProfilingEvil.com and sign up. And I promise I'll never share your email information with anybody else. Hey, thanks for watching Profiling Evil. And we'll see you soon at the next crime scene.